Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 6, Acid Base Reactions. This is video number 8 and we're going to explore, just in a little bit of general detail, some of the changing models in our understanding of acids and bases. It's important that you have just a bit of an overview of how ideas change in science. This is a kind of nice little Venn diagram because most of what has happened in the changing of our models as our understanding of acids and bases has grown is that we've realized that there are certain substances that behave in a way that we've described as acidic or basic, but our definitions haven't covered all of those examples. So the most, uh, the earliest ideas about acids is that uh, of Antoine Lavoisier and his idea was that acids are substances that contain oxygen. So if we have a look at a substance like sulfuric acid, this is an acid and it does contain oxygen. So therefore uh, it's a little tick in the Lavoisier um, definition but Another very common acid that we know about is hydrochloric acid, and hydrochloric acid certainly does not have any oxygen in it. So Lavoisier's definition, while it's correct for some acids, is certainly not correct for all. So we needed a better definition. So Humphrey Davy came up with a better definition. He came up with a definition of displaceable hydrogen. Now he was looking at certain types of um, reactions, particularly reactions involving metals. And we now know that certain metals, certainly um, active metals, can displace less active metals out of a solution, push them out of the solution. Metals can also push hydrogen ions out of the solution and we get the production of uh, hydrogen gas. So this worked out quite nicely and you can kind of, if you match Davy with displacement, the two Ds give you a little bit of an idea about how you might remember that Davy's definition was based on displaceable hydrogen. So this was really an observation about reactions. So one very common one we might have seen is if we react magnesium and hydrochloric acid, then we know that we're going to have the magnesium pushing or displacing the hydrogen from the solution. It'll come out as hydrogen gas, nice easy one for a pop test, and we'll leave the salt magnesium chloride behind. So this was a better definition. It incorporated the um, acids that were part of the Lavoisier um, definition, but extended on those to include certainly things like hydrochloric acid, which now um, does fit in terms of its reactions with metals for the Davy definition. But it still didn't go quite far enough. The definition that we probably gave you in the junior school is the one about hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So acids are substances that ionize in water to produce hydrogen ions and bases produce hydroxide ions. This is a better and more widespread definition. It enables us to look at things like concentration of acids and bases as it allows us to um, identify some specific relationship between the, hydro, uh, the hydrogen ion concentration and the strength of the solution. So this was a good definition and for all intents and purposes in our junior school, the Arrhenius definition uh, gets a big tick. Because all of the acids that we encounter and all of the acid reactions that we use in our junior uh, science years pretty much all involve acids that liberate hydrogen ions in solution. So it's a very good definition. Uh, it's a very broad definition and you can see as we go through this scale, um, these uh, circles are getting bigger and bigger and um, it incorporates all of the known information that we had up to that point, but still um, there's a few exceptions that it doesn't quite work for. The, de the, the uh, examples of where it doesn't work we will explore in future videos, but for now, the definition that we're going to be concentrating on pretty much for the rest of this module is the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Now Bronsted-Lowry is two people, not one, uh, two different scientists who both were working on um, acids and bases and who recognized that the H plus is actually the element hydrogen that has lost an electron and therefore um, has now become uh, sort of dominantly just a single proton. So the most common isotope of hydrogen is hydrogen one. 
that has one proton and no neutrons. So if it loses its outer shell electron, which is in that first shell, then it's just left as a proton. And this proton does all sorts of very interesting things in reactions between different substances. Um, one quick example, which we will have a look at a little bit later on, um, and you can find these very easily on the internet, is if you are able to mix the vapors of ammonia and hydrogen chloride, and I'm going to call it hydrogen chloride, not hydrochloric acid, because both of these are gases, then you find a little kind of white smoke being produced. That white smoke is ammonium chloride. And it's a reaction between the NH3 and the HCl. It's not about carrying out an, a neutralization reaction in a solution, so there are no hydrogen ions present, but nevertheless, it fulfills our definition of uh, an acid and a base. But it only does so if we consider the fact that Bronsted Lowry acids are proton donors. Now, if we were to draw this in a little bit more detail, which we will in class, we find that nitrogen has three bonds and uh, a lone pair um, or an unbonded pair of electrons uh, which are also present and it's that unbonded pair of electrons that actually attracts the proton from the uh, from the acid from the hydrogen chloride that moving into there that attraction between the proton and the unbonded electrons uh, is just that slight extension on the Bronsted Lowry definition which is our Lewis acid so while we describe um, acids in terms of the Bronsted Lowry definition as proton donors we describe them um, for Lewis acids as electron acceptors they're ones that accept electrons from other species I'm not going to go through all of this again um, because I'm already over time for this video uh, but it's really important that you have some comparison point and we'll have a look in a bit more detail at exactly why these ideas change but in science we are often wrong that is one of the great things about science. Science isn't worried about being wrong, but science is about empirical evidence that suggests where that wrongness is and allows us to develop and refine our theories in order to ensure that all of the observations that we make fit our theories or models. We don't change the facts, we change our ideas, we reconstruct our models, or we improve on our models, we look at where those limitations are and why perhaps a certain definition or a certain model or a certain idea about what we think about uh, a certain thing such as an acid or a base may change as we gather more data, more information, carry out more experiments. This is a really important thing when you're doing experiments yourself to think about what's going on in each of these experiments that you're looking at and why our definitions and why our ideas, particularly our models, can change over time. I've put here just a comparison between the acid and base definitions for the Arrhenius definition, the bronsted lara definition and the Lewis definition. I've left out both um, um, Davy and also Lavoisier from this table, but you can include them if you want to do that as well. Setting out work in a comparison table like this is also a very good way of not only studying, but also of representing answers in examinations. And they're things that are uh, uh, very important techniques that we'll talk about to you as we continue through this course. Thanks for watching.